today on Dr. Phil. He met Megan online and fell in love. Then she died. They had her body cremated. I was offered the ashes. He met a new woman named Allison. She died. Again, completely devastated. But then she came back to life. This has to be a cruel joke. So what the hell's going on here? He was duped for the first time on Dr. Bill. She's here. Victim and catfish come face to face. What the hell were you thinking to play with somebody's life like this? Take me through the moment that you decided to box up some human ashes and send those to him. And get ready for another shock. The real women behind the pictures of Megan and Allison are here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you, take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Today's show is all about love, betrayal, intrigue, and deception. Whoa. Now you're catching up. Bart, a divorced father of two small children, was looking for love and thought he hit the jackpot with Megan, a beautiful, bright, and successful pediatric oncology nurse at a prestigious hospital in Southern California. Take a look. 2009, my wife and I went through a divorce. A couple years later, I guess uh, May of 2012, some friends of mine suggested that I try online dating. I was going through online profiles and I came across a young lady that uh, really stood out for me. Megan seemed like a nice girl and she was very beautiful. She was a pediatric oncology nurse at Orange County Children's Hospital and we began chatting online and eventually went to telephone and text and then to calls. And about uh, two weeks later, we set up a date to meet and my birthday day, uh, June 15th, that was going to be our first date. The morning of June 15th, she called me and she told me that she'd been diagnosed with leukemia. She had two brothers, Matt and Mark, and they began texting me when Megan got sick and was in the hospital. She got worse and eventually her brother, Matt, texted me and said, if you have anything to say to her, you, know, you better say it because she's not going to be with us much longer. Within about two hours, uh, I got word that uh, she did not make it. After Megan died, the first thing that I received was a journal that was found in Megan's hospital room, and it had a lot about me in it, and so they wanted me to have it. She had also written a final letter to me and a final letter to Allie, her best friend. I got a text from Allie that said, uh, Bart, this is Allie. I know you're not okay. And we texted and talked on the phone. Allie was great. Allie was the, like the best friend you can imagine. She really helped me through Megan's death. There was no funeral. They uh, had her body cremated, and I certainly would not ask for any of the ashes, but months later, uh, I was offered some. It was a small bag, and I had it at my house. I was so excited about this person and meeting her and this really sweet girl, and all of a sudden, she just died and was gone just like that. Well, and of course, we are all sorry for his loss, but with his friend Allie by his side, encouraging him to find love again, Bart did eventually get back online and he met a new woman named Allison. Now, she was a beautiful brunette with a dangerous job as a DEA agent. Weeks later, Ali said, you know, you need to move on with your life. Megan doesn't want you to sit around and mourn. So I turned on my profile. There was a girl that pursued me, this absolute gorgeous girl named Allison. She was from Burbank, California. She worked for the Drug Enforcement Agency as a special agent, did a lot of undercover stuff. And man, we just hit it off. Most of our conversations were text, email, occasional phone call. We eventually uh, worked out our schedule to where we would be able to meet. And something always happened. She said that she was testifying at a trial in Chicago for some uh, people that, that they had arrested a while back. And while she was there testifying, uh, a, the gang put out a hit on her life. And she was going to go under protection with the U.S. Marshal Service. would have to disappear for a while until it was safe. January 13th uh, of this year, I was contacted by her partner, RJ, who I'd heard her talk about many, many times. He contacted me and said, Allison's been hurt. He said she was found this morning in a town called Riverbend, Alaska. And they held her for about five hours. They beat her. They raped her. 
They slit her throat. She has broken bones, pushed her out of the back of a moving van, and she's in the hospital right now in ICU. When she was finally discharged, RJ, her partner, confessed to her that he had kind of been a rogue uh, DEA agent. He said that Allison could testify against him and he needed her to disappear. Eventually, she escaped from this, and in the process of her escaping, she got shot in the leg. I got contacted by a lieutenant. I was told she began hemorrhaging and eventually lost so much blood, and uh, she died. Again, completely devastated. I've lost two women in my life in literally less than a year. So, obviously, a very difficult year for Bart, until he miraculously found out that Allison was, in fact, still alive after her boss, Lieutenant Travis, notified Bart of the miracle through a text message. I thought this has to be a cruel joke. I mean, I can't believe she's alive. If she's alive, I would have heard from her, right? Finally, the next day, I got not only a text, I got a phone call. I even asked for a picture. I asked Allison specifically, send me a picture of yourself, and she did. She sent me a picture of her sitting up in the hospital bed, giving me a thumbs up, showing me she was okay. That's when I realized she's still alive. This is not a joke. I found that she was going to be transferred a few days later, and she was going to fly on a medical flight to Walter Reed Hospital in Maryland. I guess the fatal mistake finally happened. I, I'm very into flying, I love airplanes, and I asked her, is there any way you can take your phone and snap a picture of the plane? It's a military flight, it's cool. So she did, she took about three or four pictures and texted them to me. The first one looked completely normal, no problems. The second one was an inside shot. It looked a little weird because it didn't match up to the, what the outside of the aircraft was. So I took it in reverse Google image searched it, and when I did, I found that all of the photos were fake. I mean, they weren't taken by her. So the more I thought about it, I began thinking, well, I wonder if she lied to me once, what else could she have lied about? So I began reverse Google image searching every single image Allison ever sent me. And all of the images of her, I didn't find anything. Everything was legitimate. But some of the travel pictures that she'd sent me when she was always taking pictures, they were all fake. I went to see my friend Allie. I took her to dinner that night. And upon dropping her off at her place, I noticed that she left her car keys in my car. I picked up her car keys and I looked and there was a library card on it with the name Jean, not Allie. And that's when I realized Allie was also lying to me. All right, so what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Remember, we had Megan who dies within weeks of meeting Bart. He says, all right, he steps in there and finds love again with the DEA agent Allison. Remember, she died, but then she came back to life. Here's what happens next. The fear came in this in when I didn't fully know what was going on. When I first started realizing that Jean had lied to me, I didn't know what her motives were. To show you the great links that Jean went to to fool me, while Allison was in the hospital, Jean actually had to have a fake bracelet made with my name and number on it, photograph it on her or some girl's arm, and send it to me. I mean, the details that she went to was absolutely crazy. This person has stayed in my house. She stayed in my parents' house. She's actually helped take care of my children before. I mean, it really is sick. I don't fully understand why she did this. I would like to get to the bottom of that. You know, what was her reasoning? What would cause a person to do something like this? If she really liked me, if I was really her friend and she wanted to be my friend, why would she watch me suffer like that? I don't understand what the sick thrill would be to control life and death in someone's life. That's twisted. You really did have a bad year. Absolutely. It was horrible. I withdrew. I never thought I could fall for something like this. No, I, I get that. Yeah. In fact, l l let's take a look at this. We have Gene. Yes. And Gene actually made up Megan. Just yeah, absolutely. out of whole cloth. Completely made up. All right. But then when, when she does bite the dust, then Allie comes on the scene to comfort you. I trusted her completely from the moment she called and texted me because Megan had reckoned, you know, what a good person she was. Yeah, and not knowing that it was Jean and Jean had created her. Not at all. Okay. Then you get this email from Allison. Yeah, and who wouldn't respond to that? Well, I mean, I, I saw mean, those sure. eyes and I'm like, wow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Then she starts talking. Yes. So then you find out that Megan is really Danielle, and you find out that Allison is really Amanda. Yes. Okay, now, what you guys may not know is that there 
is a connection between these girls and this girl. But what is it? You don't know how shocked I was when I started finding out the truth. Okay, and then, now there's a backstory for Megan. We're talking about details here. She sent Bart pictures of hospital in her hospital room. Absolutely. Her brother was having to leave the hospital. I didn't want to be, her to be there alone. And I said, you know, it's kind of awkward meeting at a hospital, but I cleared my schedule. I'm, I have a heart. I'm a nice guy. And I said, I, I booked a flight to Cleveland, Ohio, hotel room, rental car, paid for it all. The night before I was to fly out, that's when she died. From leukemia. Yeah. Her brother sent Bart Megan's jewelry and ashes from her cremation. Months later, yes. They're real human ashes. It's... That's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> you think? So then we get to Allison. Yeah. There's a complex backstory for her. Under 24 hour, seven day a week supervision by DEA agent Sarah, who reaches yeah. out to you. Yeah, did, Allison had been a D or was a DEA agent. She has testified in a drug trial in Chicago. They put out a hit on her life, and so the U.S. Marshal Service was protecting her, and that's why I couldn't see her. She was in protection being hidden. So April 2013, she's forced into hiding in the Netherlands after her partner, R.J., at the DEA went rogue. She arrives in the Netherlands. She's numb and dazed. She's sexually assaulted nightly for days. So like seven days, yeah. Shot while trying to escape the Netherlands. Then on June 7th, she had to have her leg amputated and she dies. Yep. So then June 10th, she's found alive <laughs> because the hospital had one of those darn mix ups. <laughs> But they had confused her with another guy. But in between those three days, I picked out a casket. I made funeral arrangements. I mean, I'm planning a funeral for this girl. So who does this kind of thing? What kind of person would go to such great lengths to break Bart's heart? Not once, but twice. Well, you know what? She's here. And boy, do I have some questions for this catfish. <laughs> For about a year, I catfished a guy named Bart pretending to be two different women. A woman named Megan and a woman named Allison. I did enjoy aspects of it because I did have something to do and I had that connection. And later, you basically had an emotional affair under an assumed name three times with this gentleman. I still have unanswered questions. Whose ashes were those? Whose human ashes did I have in my house? How did Jean communicate with me as these other people when she was sitting right in front of me? What was her reason for causing some of these deaths? I've been lied to so much, it's hard to know what's real and what's not. Well, Bart claims he was catfished by a woman he did not know. So who is this woman that lured Bart into this warped and twisted love trap? Well, we're about to find out. Take a look. My name is Jeannie. I've been married for seven years. I have a four-year-old son, and I'm an EMT student and a stay-at-home mom. I did all this because I was just looking for connection, for friendship, and something to do. I was bored. <laughs> I picked Danielle and Amanda because they were just really pretty. They are just gorgeous girls, and that's what gets attention, you know? I was pretending to be Megan. I did start to feel like this guy is a really nice guy and I don't want to hurt him and obviously what I'm doing is wrong. When Bart started getting intense, it was scary because that's when I started to panic and about two weeks into our connection, I told him that Megan had cancer. I was trying to give myself an out. I didn't realize how connected he was to her. After I let Megan die, he was devastated. He was just really crushed. And so I made up another character named Allie. And that character was completely me. And I was just trying to be there for him. I did enjoy aspects of it because I did have something to do. And I had that connection. Other parts I didn't enjoy because I knew I was lying to my husband and I knew that I was hurting people, and to his son as well, because his son had talked to Megan a little bit. I created Allison. I basically made her 
his dream girl. Everything that he liked that we had talked about, things that he had said he wanted in a girl, that's what I used to create that profile. I read a lot of books, crime novels, and all that kind of stuff. I got really creative with Allison as far as her career. And Allison couldn't meet with him because she was a federal agent and she had to go for training. She was on missions. She had to testify in some case and they had to put her in witness protection. She got beat up. She lost her leg. Just all sorts of really outrageous stories. It would explain why he couldn't see her in person. Eventually, Bart figured everything out. I feel embarrassed. I feel guilty. If Bart was here, I would tell him that I'm really sorry. Okay. Um, what the hell were you thinking? What the hell were you thinking to play with somebody's life like this? I never had the intention of doing this, of making anything like this big. I was bored, and I was a stay-at-home mom looking for connection with people. My husband and I were having <clears throat> issues. But you didn't do this once. You didn't do this twice. You did this three times. So if you thought, whoa, I never expected it to get that big, you could have just moonwalked right out absolutely. of this deal you're and right. been gone. But you're you right. didn't. You I knew it have. was huge. Yes, absolutely. You're right. And I, I just, I was embarrassed, and I didn't want to admit things. I didn't want to admit that I was doing something wrong. But then you just quit, right? I mean, you can just quit. After the first one, you do Megan, and you go, whoa, that got a lot deeper than I thought. This man is hurting here. And that's why I went further, because I, he was hurting so bad, and but I was trying to make him You went further because you liked the better. attention. I did like the and attention. And so you I'm fed on it, right? Absolutely, yes. And so you created all, how did you keep it straight? Seriously, I, did you have a chart? No, I, I had a very hard time keeping it straight. Absolutely, I did. Take me through the moment that you decided to box up some human ashes and send those to him. Um, I had... Who, who, where, where'd you get them? They're, they're a friend of mine that passed away. How did you get your friend's ashes? His mother gave them to me. The mother gives you the ashes. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, I can put these to good use. You just put some in a, <laughs> you just put some in a Ziploc, or how did you do it? I just, all of them. They, there wasn't very much, and I... How, how'd you contain them? What, what'd you put them in? They're in a bag. That's what they what come in. What kind of bag? It's like a plastic bag, nothing. It's like not a Ziploc. Zip no, it's not a Ziploc bag. They're in a plastic bag, bag. It's like and they a plastic were placed bag. in a martini shaker, and I took it to my place, and I left it in my room, and it was five feet from my bed. I slept several nights with it there before I, yeah. How, how do you feel about that now, what he's just saying? I'm horrified. He went through a grieving process for your entertainment. You said you were bored and lonely, right? You wanted to have... And so you wanted to, to save your boredom and, and loneliness. Instead of just stopping and taking responsibility for what I was doing and admitting what I was doing, telling him the truth, I put him through this, absolutely, and I'm wrong. I feel like a horrible person for doing this. I really do. You felt so horrible that you did it twice more? Absolutely. Yeah, I kept going. What was your payoff for going forward? I was getting the attention that I needed, and I was trying to help Bart in a way. I felt like I was helping him. Do you know how many women I missed out on dating? I, there could have been something there. And there were so many times, Bart, that you talked to me as Allie, and you said, I can't deal with this anymore. Excuse my language. And I told you, you need to go. You need to move on. And you need to... But I was so and I tried emotionally to cut you off involved. And I would there. have and cut. I would are have you stopped. criticizing no, him? No, absolutely for, not. No. For hanging no, in I'm there not. after you brutalize him emotionally? I am not. I was wrong. I, I am wrong. I know that. What I did was wrong. And I'm not trying to put anything back on you. Everything that I did was wrong. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeannie pretended uh, to be Megan's brother and sent Bart a journal that they claimed was Megan's before she died. And here's an excerpt. Don't feel good. Yuck. But at least no chemo today. Last night I vomited blood. A lot of blood. I'm a little worried. Having some breathing trouble. Bart will be here Tuesday evening. I'm so excited to see his arms around me. You remember getting that? 
broke my heart. Yeah, absolutely broke my heart. Tell me again why after Megan died that you created Allie. I felt bad that he was just on his own and I was just trying to be his friend. Next, Jeannie says she not only lied to Bart, but also her husband, who does not know the real reason she flew to Los Angeles, which was to appear on the show. She claims she wants tips from me on how to break the news to him when she returns home. But the real questions are, why does Jeannie create elaborate lies, and will she ever stop? Does your husband know about this? No. Why does he think you're here today? He thinks I'm here to see a friend. Well, he doesn't even know you're on the Dr. No, Phil show. No, he doesn't, no. I was just curious to see if you'd learned your lesson and decided to stop using deception in your life. But this marriage that you say is a seven out of 10, you've now deceived your husband. Yeah. I don't know if he watches the Dr. Phil show, but I got a, <laughs> I got a fair chance he probably knows somebody who does or yeah. somebody whose wife does. Somebody's gonna watch this and say, by the way. I, I'm gonna talk to him about it. Yeah, absolutely. But, but he has no idea. No, he doesn't. Because you basically had an emotional affair yeah. under an assumed name mm -hmm. three times with this gentleman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's cheating in my book. So three times you, you've had emotional affairs with her. Yeah. Using assumed names. Yeah. You little tramp. <laughs> Uh, it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, you must have 180 IQ to have cracked this. Seriously, you gave this. You I were spent smart. A lot of, you I spent you a lot got of a money. thread, and yeah. you just kept pulling until you got to the answer. I flew all over the United States. I literally cleared my schedule when I just started unraveling. I flew to several places in the United States, and I was determined. It was the last thing I did. I was going to get to the bottom of this. I was going to see who's real, who's not, and what's going on. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you or are you doing this with others right now? I'm not doing this with anybody else. I, it was, I talked to several Jeannie, guys before Bart. Jeannie. What? You've not used fake pictures before. You've not tried to engage with other guys no. before. So we just happened to catch you on the first one. No, there were many before Bart that I talked to. Did you use fake pictures with him? Yes. Because I, I just asked Absolutely. you and you said I'm no. Sorry. Now I you're saying you yes. Meant, Dr. Phil, I thought you meant now, after after this whole thing is blown up. That's what I So understood. before this. Yes. You used and fake pictures. And it was pictures. the same stuff, the same profiles, the same pictures. Wow. Well, you know what's coming up next after the break? <laughs> you are gonna love this. The real women behind the pictures of Megan and Allison are here. I'm going to reveal their connection when we come back. Plus, are they ready to confront Jeannie and ask some questions? We'll be right back. Megan was a girl named Danielle. I knew her vaguely from high school. And then Amanda was Allison. I knew her from high school as well. It's been almost 10 years since I've seen either one of those girls. Well, that was Jeannie who admits to using the Facebook pictures of two former high school classmates to catfish Bart, a man she met on an online dating site. Now, Jeannie created a character named Megan, and to do it, she used former classmate Danielle, a girl she went to high school with. Here's what Danielle has to say about all this. My name is Daniela. My photo was stolen and used to create an online profile of a person named Megan. It was a little awkward knowing that someone was in love with a person who they'd never actually met. I feel sorry for Bart because his heart was taken advantage of. I mean, he's a very nice person and he just had the best intentions and this person completely just broke his heart. I believe that Jean does have a few mental health issues. If she can so easily do this, I mean, she had the opportunity to leave it after Megan's death, yet she continued to do it and reopen 
more accounts so she could still keep in contact with Bart. I mean, at that point, enough is enough. She should have realized, hey, this is not okay. I should stop this here. And that filter for her it seems like it's gone. This has got to be so <laughs> surreal for you because this man lovingly grieved your tragic death. I know. He slept with your ashes on his <laughs> nightstand. Yes. Not, not cuddling. Oh, no, no, yes, I said yes, on okay, your yes. nightstand. Make that, make that clear. And, and now to see this woman that you were so invested in, you have to tell me what you're thinking right now. Well, right now I'm okay because Danielle and I have become friends from this whole thing. But when I first met her, when I, 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 she didn't know I was going to meet her. I just walked in. Literally, I found out where she worked because I didn't know if she was involved in this somehow. I didn't know well, what the course. truth was. So Who I knows? had to get to the truth. I found out where she worked at. And I went to that city and I literally showed up at her workplace. And I knew that if she was guilty when she saw me and looked me in the eye that she was going to like freak out or something. But she had a blank look. She's like, hi, can I, how can I help you? And I said, we need to talk. <laughs> you went to high school together, but you don't remember her at all. I don't. What do you have to say to her? I just want to know why you chose my picture, why you chose to... I mean, there's really um, personal pictures, like my one with my grandmother and my cousins. That's the last time I saw my grandma. I can't even look at the picture without crying. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, that's a huge issue for me. Like, you know, why would you use me? You were pretty, <laughs> and your picture was just there. It kept Facebook kept telling me I should be friends with you because we went to the same high school, and that was that. Was that. Did, did, did you hear her say before you came out that she sent your picture, she used your picture before this? Yeah, that was the, actually the first time I've heard that, which I'm not very pleased about that, I have to say. Yeah, I know. What do you say to her? Uh, the only thing I can say is sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Which... Up next, we'll meet the other woman in this love triangle, Allison, whose real name is Amanda. She does know Jeannie and has a few things to say to her. Uh, you mentioned Amanda. Well, she was Jeannie's other classmate. Uh, and she is also here. And here's what she has to say. First meeting with Bart, I was nervous. Obviously, I've never met this person. The whole situation is just crazy to me. He was very emotional, and he couldn't look at me in the eye because he was in love with this person. And to like meet me, and I, I don't even know who he is. I mean, it has to be just weird, weird. What's sick, I mean, is Bart was devastated because of this, was in love with this person, and she died. Allison died, and Jean flew all the way from where she's living to comfort him, and she's standing there rubbing his back over this person who died. It's just crazy. I think Jean likes the drama as far as so many deaths in her stories. I'm angry that she involved my twin brother Brady in this story, especially having him die. That's what hurt me more than anything. What do you say about all of this? I just feel violated. I mean, he has hundreds of pictures of me. Mm -hmm. And I think what hurts me is, you know, I, I knew her in high school. We were, we were friends, I mean, we were acquaintances. I just feel violated, I feel like my identity has been stolen. And then to hear that other people have seen these photos, I just feel like, I don't, exposed, yeah. embarrassed. It was just. How, how do you feel about that? I feel terrible, I mean, what I did was wrong, and I know that, and I'm, I feel awful that I put everybody through this. Why, why did you want to be here today? Why did you agree to come today? Because I want to take responsibility for what I did. I owe it to these three people and more people to be here and tell, tell the truth. Yeah. And um, do, do you get that your reasoning and your problem solving here you said, I was lonely, I was bored, I didn't have connection with people, that this was a really dysfunctional way Absolutely. to meet those needs. Absolutely. You say you're getting professional help, yes. true? Mm -hmm. And is it helping you? It is. Absolutely. 
And That's why I'm here, because I'm taking <clears throat> responsibility for my actions. And I hope you use this as a watershed event to move forward in your life. And, you know, if you get bored, get a hobby. I mean, <laughs> I do something, but don't use other people and their lives to, to do that. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a cruel I know. thing. And, and yeah, I do believe at one point you didn't think through how far and what impact this would have on people. But fortunately, nobody's really dead nobody got that's the good news bankrupt that's the good news. really i mean yeah it's like life looks better again I had a friend said you I can either let this make you bitter or better and we are choosing to let it make us better yeah so. exactly well i hope you do the same thing all right next we're going to switch gears to another type of online deception with a man who says his ex-girlfriend falsely accused him of posting revenge porn you'll understand we'll be right back My ex-girlfriend, Holly, claimed that I had emailed her boss and co-workers with pictures of her naked and links to videos I had been posted online. Right when we broke up, he changed my Facebook profile to a nude photo of me. None of these accusations were true, are true, or ever will be true. Holly Jacobs says she had no idea that her ex-boyfriend would post explicit photographs and videos that she shared with him and him alone while dating. But instead of hiding, she spoke out publicly against revenge porn. Take a look. Can you imagine your most revealing pictures ending up online for everyone to see? It's called revenge porn. It's a growing form of online harassment. It happened to a woman in Florida, and NBC's Carrie Sanders shows us how she's fighting back. Holly Jacobs was 26 and a PhD candidate when her life suddenly turned upside down. Naked pictures she had sent to her boyfriend years before showed up on the web. I just felt like my life was ruined. Jacob sued her ex-boyfriend, Ryan Say, in civil court, becoming, it's believed, the first person in Florida to sue someone for allegedly distributing revenge pornography. Say is also facing related criminal charges, including stalking and unlawful publication. Well, Ryan vehemently denies the charges, saying someone hacked his computer. After this dispute being laid out in the headlines, all charges against Ryan were recently dropped. In a Dr. Phil exclusive interview, Ryan says he is ready to finally tell his side of the story. Holly and I started dating in 2005. The setting of new photos actually began because Holly decided that looking at pornography was tantamount to cheating. So she decided that if she was in the pictures, it would not be cheating. Uh, Holly was very paranoid, so Holly created a completely separate email account to send any private information, whether it was nude pictures, uh, sexy messages, videos, etc. Around the end of 2008, we did stop the relationship, and uh, it was surprisingly cordial and amicable. Years later, uh, I did receive a phone call from a detective. Holly claimed that I had emailed her boss and co-workers with pictures of her naked and links to videos I had been posted online. She also claimed that I had physically stalked her outside of her uh, apartment. None of these accusations were true, are true, or ever will be true. The petitioner, Holly, and her attorney were not able to provide any evidence that I had created Facebook profiles, up to, uploaded any pictures, naked or elsewise, so of course it was dismissed. Now my ex-girlfriend is going on international media exposing these pictures. I'm joined by Holly Jacobs and her lawyer. And saying these slanderous things about me. Tell our viewers what happened to you. I was dating somebody for three years. Right when we broke up, he changed my Facebook profile to a nude photo of me. Uh -huh. Six months later, he posted several of those photos up on a a website. Well, she's definitely on a media blitz against me. Holly's been doing enough media that a publicist would be proud. And then years later, he made my material go viral when he found out that I was dating somebody new. 
I was not the one to distribute these pictures, upload them. It was not me. At some point, Holly is going to have to accept that. Okay, so Ryan, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. We've talked about this before, but she's been talking everywhere. Yes, she has. If you didn't do this, how did it happen? Are they, they are the pictures that were on your computer, correct? Correct. They are definitely pictures that were on my computer. Holly had sent them to me via email. I don't really know how this actually got out, but it could be on Holly's side or my side. But at some place, yes, we've had a definite breach of security. H have you ever had that happen before? Yes. I was part of a rather large corporate hacking where 400,000 emails and passwords were posted online by hackers. And my email was one of them. So, so you're, you're saying absolutely, unequivocally, you did not share these pictures with anyone? There is 100% no chance that I shared these pictures with anyone. Right. Well, we actually invited Holly to be on the show. Um, and here is her statement. After giving it some thought and sleeping on it last night, I decided that I really wouldn't be comfortable going on the show if Ryan is on there in any capacity whatsoever. So, as my saying, she was willing to come, but not if you came. And I felt like you needed a chance to tell your story. No, I appreciate that. Uh, Ryan's ex, Holly Jacobs, says he was out for revenge after their breakup, and here's what she believes motivated Ryan. Take a look. He posted several of those photos up on a, a website, amihotornotnude.com. And then years later, he made my material go viral when he found out that I was dating somebody new. What do you say to that? I'd say that she's delusional. All right, well, let's take a break. Ryan says even though the charges against him have been dropped, he claims he is now being harassed by his ex. And there's an old saying in Texas, you may beat the rap, but you won't beat the ride. And we'll talk about what that means when we come back. This has definitely been one of the more trying times emotionally in my life. I'm depressed. This entire ordeal has had an effect on my career. I've lost a good amount of clients. Honestly, I don't believe that there's anything that can fix the damage that has been done. Ryan says his ex-girlfriend, Holly Jacobs, falsely accused him of uploading naked pictures and intimate videos of her on at least 178 revenge porn sites. Do you think she knows you didn't? That's something that, honestly, I go back and forth with on a day-to-day -day basis. This was not an ugly, set your clothes on fire, no. slit your tires kind of breakup. No. And this was not all that long after you guys had broken up, right? No, and the, yeah, that was actually after pictures had actually been posted in 2009 on Facebook, where she had actually contacted me and said, not, hey, did you do these things? More of, watch out, our pictures are out there. You're a victim, I'm sorry. How do we fix this? And we continued to talk for three months while she dated to someone else, and then in our relationship just even as friends, trickled off into nothing. So when all of this blew back up, you were surprised? I was very surprised when I received well, a letter in the mail, yes. Well, I'm glad you came here to tell your side of the story because she's done a lot of talking and you have not said a peep about it until now. Which has hurt uh, me, definitely. Uh, well, but you're, you're saying it now and I think you've given a very good accounting of yourself. Ryan, well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of my guests today. Thanks for being here. So long.